it is uh, it's August. It's hella hot outside. I've got fans going everywhere. There is air conditioning in this section of Bullshed Swim Baits and Jekyll Baits here. Um, but it's hot. So for this video, I'm going to turn the fan off because we're going to do uh, just a couple of simple patterns. But I saw a really cool picture of a juvenile cutty, um, cutthroat trout. And I want to use that as a reference. I would normally do some of these patterns on jerk baits, but I've got these little 1.5 crank baits available. I love the pattern, so let's get started. Got some of this wicked white. It is a detail white. It's somewhat transparent, but not completely. Uh, as far as this pattern goes, it does not need to be at all transparent. Uh, if you look at trout, they have kind of a whitish belly, almost a pearl white. And yep, it's coming. We're going to be using that mission, Starship White. Uh, but I want to get a good base coat of white down first on these guys. And we're going to go running down all four at the same time so that you can see. Again, how we do it. It's just one color at a time. And once you get used to doing that, we should be good to go. Um, I just posted a little thing on Instagram. So I'm on a, a bunch of different social platforms. Uh, but I posted something on Instagram that shows where I came from, the beginnings, uh, as far as the baits. And man, there's some crusty baits. Uh, using fingernail polish and glitter and stuff. And it's just the stuff when you don't know what the heck you're doing, that's how you start out. And I think that's really good to show the progression. But in the same respect, it also shows that I didn't come out gangbusters and, and really great patterns to, to begin with. I didn't have a whole lot of people that I could turn to or look at to get instruction. So most of what I did, with exception to, I'd say, um, Gerald Novick was out there. Um, Michael Ornstein was out there. He was one of the pioneers that taught a little bit about uh, how to airbrush fishing lures on uh, on YouTube. And there were a couple others, but you just, yeah, I think Solar False Bait Solar has been around for a very long time. Uh, but as far as teaching how to, how to do fishing lures, there just wasn't a whole lot there. So a lot of what I did, just like I'm sure a lot of what you guys might have done, was trial and error. So... Today, there's, it's saturated with stuff, but what I notice is people come and go. So there's very few people, and, and me being one of them, that have been on YouTube. I've been on since 2012. Um, not all fishing, teaching type stuff, but mostly fishing. Uh, some of my old music videos and live shows and stuff like that, if you really want to scroll back, they're back there. Um, you can find that. So um, just a... a you know, progression in, in the craft, a progression in the level of skill. I think a lot of that comes into play. And I've really, I'm making an effort this year to really go back to my roots and start teaching again because I miss it. I love teaching. Uh, one of the things that I enjoy. So we're going to stop this <laughs> long introduction and get into the next color, which is going to be kind of like a cream bone. If you look at the picture, it's a... Uh, it's kind of a fade up from the belly. This next color is a Tim Gore's Bloodline, and it is the illustration, get that in frame for you guys, illustration Old Bone White. And I'm not going to go all the way up with it, and you'll see why in a little bit. I just want to get a little bit of variation between the real, real white and the rest of the bait. I just want to put a, just a tiny little bit of this down. one strip of it going across on all four baits and you can see that a little bit of a difference it's not much but we're going to heat set this stuff and then i'm going to pull a stencil out because if you notice there are some black dots that are kind of dropped down and and deeper in the the flesh of this trout that i want to try and do the same with and portray depth because that's what i like to do so I am going to cut apart 
this little stencil here and by no means is this um, <laughs> this is not designed for trout by any stretch of the imagination but uh, it does have a couple of little spots on it that I think can be useful and that I can absolutely use for this. If you're looking at the picture, you see that um, there are, on the gill plate on the cheeks, there's like three to four little dots to the side of the eye, and I think that these little guys right here going on in a semicircle can work pretty well. So I've got some black in the, uh, in the cup, and I'm going to bring this around to an angle that I think is going to look correct and I don't know if I'm going to have to cut this down a little bit more. I might. Probably will. So let's just go ahead and cut away everything else that we don't need. See how close we have to get this. Yeah, a little bit more. That's okay. There we go. There we go. So now I can come in here and lay down that real light pressure and I'm just gonna and yeah I can do this for you 100 percent but since I'm doing more than one kind of want that consistency in all of them if that makes any sense so we're gonna do it on each one both sides we'll flip it over for the other one. And back here. Now we have some consistency on the cheek. Now that we've stenciled in these little marks on the gill cheeks, gill plates, I've got this and it's probably a little bit too big for this. This is probably meant for a larger, uh, maybe something that's this size, um, but it's still fine. So we're just not gonna add as many of them on there. And I'm gonna be as consistent as I can and just lay in a few across the body on each, each one of these. And you'll notice that there's marks above and then below where the, uh, where that lateral line is. And we don't want to necessarily give too much contrast to these simply because we need to drop this back into the background. So this is going to be under several layers. I just wanted it over top of the initial cream layer. And I'm going to reverse it on the opposite side. And again, just so we get in a little bit of reference. There are a lot of really, really cool markings on this cutthroat that you normally don't find on a rainbow. I mean, brown trout are full of those dots, um, but usually on rainbows you get consistent, like the lower section of this, if you're looking at the, at the shot. And then onto that, I can just add a couple of freehand par marks, about four. We'll do that here as well. And underneath. And then I'll flip it around to the other side. Just loosely set this in. There we go. And then just do about four. I'm doing four on each one in freehand just because freehand does look a lot more natural than a stencil. Now if you're looking at this on the screen 
you're also noticing that unlike a rainbow trout, the lateral line has got more of a rusted orange, orange-ish color. And what I want to do with that is just bring that in where the lateral line would be. And I'm going to place it as, uh, as broken as it is and appears. You don't have to go very hard with this at all. Just a couple of spots. You see how that's going. Just, just enough to get it in there. Super light. Just control it. They don't all have to be exact. You just want that broken lateral line. There's also just a hint in the forehead of fairly similar in color to what is on the lateral line. So we're going to put that in there just loosely. Again, this is going to kind of disappear as we, uh, as we layer this up. So now you'll notice we have, there we go. We've got the dots on the cheeks. We've got the contrasted, which is going to fade into the background as we layer over this in some transparent paint. And we have our broken lateral line across the midsection of these trout. Now you guys know I love my hand cut stencils and there is a very bright orange peck fin on these fish. So my normal stencils for fins won't work. So we're going to go below the cheek and to the underside of, there we go, underside of the lateral line and we're just going to drop in that fin. So just setting them in real light and we can kind of work around the dots because these the peck fins on trout and most fish are super translucent, real, real, real translucent. So they don't have to cover over anything in specific. They just need to look like they're there. So there we have it. Just finishing up these guys. And then one more. Right about there. Now here comes that Starship White. Cleaned out the airbrush cup real quick. Just have a clean cup so it doesn't look pink on the belly. And now I'm going to come on the belly of these trout and lay in that pearl and start to bring that up the sides to drop this stuff into the background. I never want to have too much in the cup. I'd rather refill it. So now we're starting to get a little bit of transparency. There we go. And we're starting to see what depth would look like naturally. That should do that pretty well. We're going to add some yellow into this as well. I do have this in a Vallejo bottle and a shifter bottle. It's not a shifter. It's not even a pearl. Um, it's just a little bit of semi-transparent yellow, like almost like a pastel yellow that I have um, mixed together. It's just uh, like a bright transparent yellow and some white. I just want to kind of lay in a couple areas. You can see how that looks. And I want to do this broken the same way I did the orange. And 
Now we're really starting to fade those lines and the dots into the background here. Now you can really start to see it take on that three-dimensional, more natural appearance. The more layers and transparency you put on, the more natural this is going to look. So I'm going to do just a, a quick, I'm going to get rid of all the rest of the yellow in this and add just a tiny bit of yellow to the head and the spine. And we're also going to layer that over top. That's perfect. The right amount was in a cup. We're going to layer some brown, probably some sepia, and some raw umber over that. So I'm kind of kind of working on the fly here, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, but I'm going to do some sepia across the upper third, real light. It's got more of a reddish hue to it. And then over top of that, I'm going to add that detail raw umber, which sepia has got a little bit more red to it, which is fine in this pattern. You can see little hints of that in the browns, but at the same time, you don't want you don't want to go crazy with it. You want that transparent brown look. Flip this over. across the top and the spine. Let's tie all that in together. blend pretty well. There we go. Just finish that up. A little more Starship White just to drop the top section of this in the background. We're doing it in stages because we just we want to have that little bit of shimmer to these guys. Add a little bit more. Put this. just dried this, heat set it a little bit uh, because I want to come back and add just a hint of that final thin red line and I'm going to take off the tip of this, make sure I have a clean needle tip, just pull that out gently. Good flow. There we go. Should do it. And then come in very easy. And run that across. Thank you. 
again, putting that in there. Good deal. Now, although you can't really see it that well in the picture, um, cutthroats have a slash, hence the name. So we're going to give them just a hint of that on the underside of this. And then at the end, we're going to end lay in the uh, the last of the black dots and probably come over the peck fin just a little bit more. There we go. I've got black loaded back in the cup and this stencil it's not super super easy to have a lot of randomization but you can use less pressure and get a much less dark, less contrasted look. Also, if you go towards the edges, these dots are a little more scattered. So, you get something that, if it'll focus, looks more like that which is a little bit more natural. I want to place just a few here in the face, around the eyes, but not super dark, just enough to give you a, a hint. And then also just very lightly across the spine. There we go. I'm going to do the rest of these stick to one side and then the other. But again, um, less pressure, use more contrast and heavier spray towards the back of this. Because that's how it appears. It's, it's a good bit darker along the top section here and towards the back of the bait then just super light. Everywhere else. grabbing the opposite sides of this. Nice and light on the underside. A little heavier towards the back. And then random dots and a very light coat on the belly. Same thing here. I'll bring you up into focus a little bit better. There it is. towards the back. 
So that gives you a fairly accurate portrayal. There's probably a few too many dots on here for the picture that you see. But as far as the coloring and being able to get that close on a 1.5 versus a jerk bait where you have a little bit longer of real estate, I'd say not too bad. Now I could go a step further and I might. Um, if you look real close at the cheeks, those three to four black lines just to the outside of the eye, they are kind of almost like a brown trout where you've got a little bit of white behind them. So I might ring those with um, some freehand, like maybe with a acrylic marker, just real light, or I might leave them as they are. Uh, not super critical to the development of this bait, but yeah, if you want to do it, go for it certainly not going to hurt anything. Now the one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to redefine this peck fin. Um, I just feel like it needs to kind of almost drop too much in the background where I should have probably waited. Uh, just happened to do it when I had the orange color into the rest of the bait. So I'm going to come back over this and finish that, make bring it more into the foreground, drop those dots behind it so it looks more natural. Look at that. Make sure I've got good flow in the cup. And then just line that up. Come over it again. And see, that makes all the difference in the world, doesn't it? You don't want to go too dark with this stuff. Uh, number one, it's a, it's a very thin, transparent, but this, this stuff runs really, really easy. But I do like this peck fin, this orange peck fin, to stand out a little bit and bring it more into the foreground and uh, just going over it and coating it one more time seems to really do the trick with this. So I'm um, much happier. Bringing that into the foreground. Yeah, definitely, definitely better. Now you guys can play with this as much as you want or as little. You can make this a much simpler pattern if you choose. Certainly nothing wrong with that. There we go. Now we've got them on both sides. I think we're doing all right here with this pattern. What do you guys think? Now, since the name of this fish is a greenback cutthroat, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in a little bit of bright gold brown, which actually is green. Um, I'm going to drop that in just to the spine a little bit and just maybe the top third of this bait. You can instantly see that, yep, that's a green just to give a little bit of extra something to the finished product here. There we go. We need some eyes on this as well. So I'm adding some what I would consider trout eyes this. Me a comment below let me know what you think uh would love to see if you guys are trying this pattern if you uh, get to the finish line love to see your pictures these are six millimeter eyes for this you really want to try and get as close as you can to what that trout eye really looks like and this is pretty close um, the 
these are definitely more lifelike than just the holographic back yellow. So I recommend whenever you get the chance, check out guys like uh, Matt over at Dead Meat Customs. I, I wish, wish, wish that um, Jetson was still doing stuff as well. I haven't seen or heard from him in a while. Um, he had some, as a matter of fact, one of these is his old eyes. So, that's what I got for you guys today. I really hope that you've enjoyed it. I love teaching you guys. Love it if you got some value out of this. And I will see you on the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.